the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. A real great experience of mine, uh, especially when it came to Perth, was becoming a Costco member. It was it was fantastic. It took me a while to learn that it's probably not the best thing to be for a single person. Yeah, because you buy things in bulk and then, yeah. <laughs> then they're in the freezer for a long time. Yeah, aren't, they Brian, like a, aren't they Brian like, Morris? Like a keg of mayonnaise. <laughs> Sixty dollars though to um, be a member fee every year. Amazing. Mm. My favourite thing about shame. it though, my favourite thing about it is getting to, getting to the end because I'm a person that enjoys I- IKEA, but at the end of IKEA, knowing there's a dollar hot dog and, and yeah, some, yeah, and some chips. Real, yep. Yes. I'm all about it. It's a deliberate psychological ploy to make you feel nah. better about the experience because you, know you leave with a full belly and a bargain. And can I tell you the bargains at that food court are amazing? Like, you can get a burger for a few bucks, like a chicken burger. Don't ask any questions about it. You just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But you know what? Like, when it's going in, it's like, yeah, this yeah. is amazing. There's another thing that's very, very popular there. It's their pizza. And people go there and buy a whole pizza for fifteen ninety nine, mm-hmm. or they can get a slice for $2.99. Oh. This woman named Tammy, was visiting the Costco store in Western Sydney and she was really upset with what she saw from the people that were treating the pizza guy like crap. (laughs) She said that... um she said that she labelled all the shoppers their a-holes. She said, you guys need to chill at Costco. I understand that we're all happy to get pizza at the end, as we are. Yes. That does not give you an excuse to treat the pizza guy like crap. I swear the way that this poor kid was treated was horrendous. <laughs> I saw people banging on the window and then pushing their receipts up to the window to see if their order had been yelled out yet. She said the impatient shoppers ordered their food then immediately went straight to the window, urging the young worker to give them their pizza. <laughs> Heaps of people flocked so, to the comment they- section. Do they make it fresh? Yeah. Yeah. They so do. Were you, how, why would you well, expect a, a, a pizza <laughs> that you've just ordered to be ready if they have to cook it there's for you? There's a lot of people lining up. As you know, Nathan, where the Costco yeah. is here, yeah. there's a lot of people waiting for food. So, so I was just thinking, one second. I was just thinking, oh, this, this can't be a thing. Mm. And then someone else jumped on in the comments section and said, yep, every time I'm there at Costco, the pizza staff are always being abused by somebody. Oh. <laughs> they aren't even Let being rude to the customers. Are... It's not fair. The pizza is staff. Is this all the pizza staff at all the Costco's? Are are facing abuse from people? Is it like do you, do you get there and go? Oh no, I'm on the pizza counter yes. today. Is that the way? Is that the way your mind goes? Well, I just think, or are you always the pizza person? Like at Costco, you've got I to mean, work your way up. I'm sure a lot of people that work at Costco are having an amazing time. They probably think the job's great. Yes. It's the pizza. Is 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 that the role? Is that the one where you go? Don't know. But you're, you're giving gonna... people hot food. Yeah. Not, but they obviously not more quick enough. Yeah. Come on, that's a terrible role. I've never been. in a position where I've been nailed for just that role. No, no because you're on it. the other side of the counter. You're the person You're the one that yells them. at everyone. I always tell them, don't take it serious. Don't take it personally. Yeah, so easy that's, to not take it occasion. personally, but then you just start yelling at them. But don't take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> you're the worst of the worst. The best job I had, which is completely the opposite, is when I was working at a bottle shop. When you work at a bottle shop and someone and you hand over six cans of whatever. They're all happy to That is you. the smiliest face you'll ever see. But on the other hand... Yeah, Nath, working the pizza guy. Well, look, we do know that there are people that get abused all the time. There's telling marketers. There are certain industries yes, that get abused inspectors. by people all the time. But we want to talk about uh, specific roles within yes. a, within a company or a workplace. Is there something at your job? Where customers treat you the worst? Is there a role? Is there a position? You know, it, okay. you know the job because if you're told you're doing it that for the day, you go, oh uh, no, gonna yep. cop no, it. We want to find no. out where customers treat people the worst because I never thought in a million years it would be the pizza guy at Costco. Yeah, is it the paint <laughs> counter at Bunnings? I don't know. No, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> We're going to give somebody um, something so they can just chill out and forget their day and have a great sure. time. Three hundred dollar voucher to Republic of Fremantle oh, Distilling Co. Give someone a gin making experience with a gin school gift voucher from republicoffremantle.com. Just but, a heads up to their bottled cocktails. Amazing. Well, there you go. <laughs> so we are talking about right, jobs or positions within yeah. jobs. Things that we might not know about where customers treat you the absolute worst. What is it? Um, Harry, you've noticed something when you've been out looking um, for new stationery. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. A particular shop that sells stuff for offices. Oh, yeah. um, a big blue one. Yeah. 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 Oh, look, uh, <laughs> so the printing department. Yes. Yes, and all those well. poor they're, people. They're, oh, I just can't believe. There's a massive queue. They'd be working so hard, yeah. run off their feet. Yeah. And the people that are, you know, getting stuff printed there end up paying about thirty cents total <laughs> for the <Yes>. shop. <laughs> and that person could have been stuffing around with this customer for forty minutes, and yes. the end result is thirty. <laughs> 
them. Because they're like, so, download the app and do it on the little self-serve machine yeah. over there. There's a lot of numbers to punch in and they're there forever is. getting called yeah. over to yeah, oh. deal with people you know, like me. Right. The, person, doing. Doing, when, the person I feel the saddest for when I see them is when you walk um, into an Apple store and you see the table where the young person is speaking <laughs> to a whole table full of silver-haired <laughs> people <laughs> telling them, this is how you turn the phone off. Now, now, I now the, go to oh settings. Oh, my God. This is no, a no, photo. This, we're going to take a photo next. Go to settings. I cannot. <laughs> that poor person. Killian, hello. How are you going? Hi, okay, Killian. Okay, talk to us. What's the worst role at your work? Um, so, after working in the telco industry for many, many years, um, I definitely hands down think the concierge, the person that you first meet with the iPad when you first walk in. Yes, um, yes. I had been in that role when I first started and the amount of use that you would cough that they think that you have this magic wand and you can just, you know, wave it around and all of their problems are fixed. I've even been physically assaulted by a customer before. What? I didn't actually have the information that they needed right then and there. What? And then I even went into manager roles. And as a manager, they now put you as the concierge in that they still don't think that you know that you should know everything and that if you're the manager that you should drop everything for them and not serve anyone else but them until their problem is fixed. All right, Killian. So what sort of industry is this? Telco. Telco. Yeah, telco. Yeah, telco. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, uh, like, uh, when they physically assaulted you, What? how did that happen? So they asked you a question and then you didn't answer it properly and they hit you? Well, they came back a couple of times. So basically, you know, they would come in, ask the question, and you go, well, you know, there's a 20-minute wait, 30-minute wait, and then clearly their time, 30 seconds, is 45 minutes. So then they would come back after a minute or two and say, hey, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? Or is it my turn? Is it my turn? And then they get a bit arky up, and then obviously in the industry, if they're getting a little bit arced up, you just, you know, put things aside and just fix them to try and get them out of the store because working in the city, there's a lot of interesting characters in her city, as we all know. Um, and then, yeah, he just blew up and hit me in the face. Oh, oh my in the God, face. Are you joking? Oh, my God. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> There was a story on last night, actually, on the news, talking about how people are treating retail, yes. retail workers and everyone going, chill out, because that's, yeah. that's, that's someone's daughter, that's someone's mother, yes, that's and someone's son. Yes, they're also son. just a person they're doing just, their they're just, job. They're just going to work and they shouldn't feel frightened about yes. going to their work, having to deal with your crap. But they exactly. should get it right. Oh, Killian, thank you. <laughs> uh, Harry's in Burns Beach. Hello. Hello. Oh, All right, yes. Has. What is the worst role at your workplace? Um, probably self-serve checkout. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, right, eh? Why? Yeah, I, it, sometimes when I'm closing and it's late at night, I have people who are, like, pushing on 90, come in and just self-righteous about, you know, wanting to be served by a person, and I'm just standing there, <laughs> just trying to do my best. Because <laughs> it's not your idea to put this self-service check out no, no, there. No, it definitely was not. I wish I could just put them back myself at the front. <laughs> and the other I, thing I, is, the, the reason why they... Yeah, because if you only got a couple of things, which often the, mm, the elderly people yeah. do, it's easy to just scan it yourself and just be on with it rather can than I just say, putting someone at the checkout. Yeah. Can I say, I'm now, I, I'm now absorbing all of my experiences at the self-serve checkout, and you're right, the amount of times that I have seen... The person working there, have it get, someone having a gold on because you know when it says there's something wrong with your bag? Yeah. Mm. And like oh. suddenly you, the red light goes on. That's not that person's fault that's no. standing there supervising. No. Don't <laughs> ever go at them. None of us know why suddenly the eggplant think it's, thinks it's moved. None of us know. I <laughs> agree, man. None of us know. No. Too funny. Thanks, Harry. Stay strong. Stay strong. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a $300 voucher to the Republic of Fremantle Distilling Co. Give someone a gin-making experience with a gin school gift voucher from republicoffremantle.com. It's so good. It's so much fun. I mean, Killian was telling us about getting struck. He got literally I mean, assaulted. We have to give That's it to him, go, yeah. surely. It's the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Chicago coming to town. I know, pretty exciting stuff. One thing that we do know about is Chicago. Yeah. Like, there's some rent. Rent? I never got it. Never knew what that musical was about. Oh, okay, right. There's another one that's like Chicago. What was that? Cats. <laughs> 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 Never got that. Chicago, I get. Yeah, we've we'll been around for 100 years. Playing the role of Velma Kelly, none other. Perth's own oh, Zoe Ventura. Oh, Good morning. Gosh. Well, Welcome. Just hearing the music gives me... <laughs> Does it? It's going to sound terrible, but anxiety, but in a good way, because yeah. I'm really excited because we open next week. Oh, but just that's the, like? open, that's the opening of the show, which yes. is like, <gasps> so it's just giving me a visceral is it reaction. Like when a, is it like when a nursing mother hears another baby crying, their breasts yes. start leaking? <laughs> <laughs> 
I wouldn't have you're put experience? it that way, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's an involuntary reaction yeah, to your yeah, body. It's true. Yeah. That's true. That's so true. the good news is we're starting here in Perth because often that uh, yes. it comes the other way around, which I don't mind anyway because you mm. know that everyone's got their practice down before they get here. <laughs> exactly. So this time it's the other way around before you start travelling around Australia. So you're fresh. Fresh is on. We're super fresh, but we're very excited to be here. Obviously, it's my hometown. Yeah. Got a lot of very special people here. and Hitting um, you up for free tickets, no doubt. I mean... <laughs> phone calls. Um, but yeah, we opened in Crown, so yeah, super excited. Can we talk about your history with Perth? So what school did you go to? I went to Penrose College in Como. Oh, Penrose? Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they produce lovely, there. lovely ladies We have a Penrose. couple of girls that work here that went to Penrose. Excellent. Yes. Good ladies. Yes. And, and then from ladies. there, what did we do? Uh, we moved to Melbourne and we, okay. we went to the VCA. Did we have a part-time job while we were in Perth? We yes. I worked at the Boat Shed Cafe. Did oh, does you? that still exist? Yeah. I don't know. Is that exactly in Cottesloe? No, 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 South Perth. Perth. Yeah, South Perth. Yeah, is that still there? Yeah, I don't know, is it? Oh, oh, that, well, it's it is, a restaurant, isn't it? yeah. It's yeah. a cafe still you there in the water. You the I did. I did. Wait, yeah. So waiting tables or was, in the kitchen? I was waiting tables. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't think I had any. Oh, and I worked at a little book cafe that was also down in South Perth at that stage. Um, I don't know if that... It was like a little bookstore. Yeah, store. I know the one you mean. Do you, you remember your, your, your brother's school when you are at Penrose? Yes, Wesley College. Wesley. My, my, my brother went there. Weren't you uh, supposed yeah. to marry someone from there? Not your brother, but... <laughs> <laughs> is that the way, isn't it? No? Like, I don't know, Buddy Franklin well, or someone? Just, <laughs> just, just organised for the oh, dinner God. dances and yeah. the uh, river cruises and yeah, stuff like I that. I think I left too early. I, like, oh, I, left, okay. I left when I was, like, after year 12. I was 17, so I think I, I missed that boat to marry a good Wesley boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, what did your parents <laughs> say when you wanted to to do this as a career because you know it's 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 a hit and miss. Yeah, mm. totally. Well, my my mum was a dancer and a choreographer. I oh, so you're from that world. Yes, and my dad was a musician. So they, uh, we were kind of always around it when we grew up, but they were always very like, why don't you just study medicine or <laughs> get a real job, you know, knowing full well that, you know, some stability would be great. Yeah. But also, you know, we grew up in a really creative household, so there was really no other choice. We've seen you on TV for, for so long. Um, I didn't realise, did you, did you start in musical theatre to begin I with? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, almost by accident because I'd studied music through um, school and then, yeah, fell into a musical while I was wanting to get into a more like contemporary dance and travelling the world in mm. contemporary companies and stuff, but then just loved it and then toured in musicals for like seven years. But, um, yeah, I started in that and then kind of moved into film and TV after Did I have this, this image of you playing uh, a role where you're a soccer player? Did you, were you, was that you? No. No? Okay. All right, I'm just, I'm imagining <laughs> someone oh, else. I'm intrigued. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm intrigued. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there yeah. a musical of Bend Like Beckham? Because if there isn't, there should be. Can you yeah, play, sure. can you play uh, music on, on any instrument? Because uh, you were studying music. Not no? anymore. I used to play the piano and the flute. And the recorder, of course. The, of the recorder. Course, yes. Of course. <laughs> she can belt out turn on the sun. <laughs> <laughs> I can do a mean hot cross bus. Yeah. 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 My strings was turned on the side. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I travel around. Yeah. Natalie and I were both at separate schools, but in the recorder yeah. ensemble. ensemble. So we would travel mm. around For and real. play the recorder to other. It was like a travelling group, a oh, travelling band. Yes. Oh There'd be God. groupies. And then also, <laughs> that same year, I'd also travel around schools because I was part of the jump rope for Heart. Uh, I remember the Exhibition jump squad. Yeah. Because <laughs> I could do triple unders. <laughs> <laughs> the talent. I was like, I went up high, the rope, and I'm going under me. I was like, when's oh this going to stop? Fabulous. <laughs> it's oh, fabulous. I'm going to hit space in a minute. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good, Zoe. Perfection. Perfection. And so we had a few people in recently about musicals, and, you know, they really have to take care of their voice. Mm -hmm. What's the go with you? Um, yes, I will be taking care of my voice. Do you steam your voice? Do you do... Yeah, what, what, what is that? Look, Manuka I'm, honey, um, all of that. Listen, I haven't sung for a really long time since I was doing music theatre, which was a, a long time ago, <clears throat> maybe perhaps more than 15 years. So this is, yeah, this is going to be a new thing for me, just taking care of my voice as I go along. And more physically for me, it's going to be... Um, it's a very physical show. It's mm. a very physical yeah. role. So just keeping on top of that um, as well will be uh, interesting. But, yeah brilliant challenge. Zoe, there are so many people right now that are connecting with your story saying, yes, mm. I used to sing when I was younger yeah. and, and I mm. haven't and now I want to take it back up again. So let's talk about um, vocal warm-ups. Can you do some with us now <laughs> that you would do before going on to the stage? Just let us know what we'd need to do. Um, sure. Okay. We need to do some sirens. Be like, mm, just like okay, ready? Oh, ready? Humming, just mm. Mm. Very nice, very nice. And now 
they can do maybe like a one, one, two, one, one, two, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. You got all oh, that. One, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, seven, nine, two. And now you're ready to go. And now you're ready to go. Sounds like a telephone. Now you can sing all that jazz. That's it. But what about, isn't it like a. Oh, yeah. So you can go. Yeah, you can do that. I tell you what, that's also wrong. Do it, do it, do it. I dare you. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, we're warm. He smashed it. To so many people, Zoe, you are Mel Rafter, <laughs> including Harry. Turn your mic on. Hello. Hi, Harry, hi. you hi. are deeply affected. Yeah, it was an iconic TV show, of course, but some I never watched much TV, and this is when I got around with the family in this mm. moment. I would have been like 17 or 18 yeah. when that particular thing, incident happened. Yes. And, um, I think you can do a spoiler. It's, it's yeah. you know, we're past the time now. Well, you're, you're checking your phone on the way to see uh, yes. Ben yes. and you, well, the um, through a stop sign yes. and yeah. uh, T-Bond. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's the hot, <laughs> highest rating oh. show ever in Australian yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah, at the time, yeah, it was um, the highest rating episode of drama. It was like 2.3 million people or something, which, which doesn't really happen now because of streaming. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was Harry, of course. Harry, a question. How are you going? Because to, to have said goodbye to someone and then have her back right yes. in front of you, because I, I've experienced it too. I remember when Todd on Neighbours died, yes. and then I went into Brashes and I bought a CD from him. <laughs> and a, I couldn't, and I was like, and that's Smith is, is not dead. Is that Brashes? And I, I couldn't even resolve what was happening, oh so you, this must be puzzling Well, you. it's ro- it's a roller coaster because you think back to being at the morgue and the cold play is going with you. Turn it off, turn it off. That's not the cold play song people don't start calling now. (laughs) (laughs) And I remember being 16 or 17 and, you know, know, tough emotionalist 16-year-old with the family going, sitting in my beanbag, going, (laughs) pop. No, I'm fine. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. But it's nice to see you here, Zoe. Thank you. It's very well, nice to well be here. Good. I'm well, yeah. sorry for the trauma. Mm. Um, That's okay. But yeah. also a lesson. No. Don't no. text and drive. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. It's just a heartfelt yeah. story about a boy and his being bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so we back to the rafters and a home and away and stuff like that. Um, they're forever getting shown all around the world. It, from a residual point of view, just every now and then, do you just cop a check out of the left, out of left field? <laughs> um, I wish that'd be great. Um, kind of, not really, not not so much for the Australian stuff. When you do like a an, an international production, say like um, I did like the teeniest, tiniest bit on um, Pirates of the Caribbean a few yes, years yeah, ago, yeah. Yeah. and ev- that that just keeps on coming through. No, I mean not all, regularly. Yeah, just, yeah. Uh, randomly, you'll just get a and not massive amounts, but yeah, you just do. Which is, so are you talk hundreds or a think, couple of thousand or listen. This is very. What about what about the friends the friends cast? They were the first. Um, oh. They were the first cast to secure a residual deal. Can you imagine? And yeah. I think oh. I think um, uh, even to date they, they get around fifty million dollars a year each. Just Unbelievable. Because they're, they're shown everywhere all the time. Yep. It's amazing, isn't yep. it? Well, yep. That's insane. Mm. Talk to me um, about your on stage role. Have you ever blanked on when you're on stage? Like all oh, the don't words. Put this no, but why would you put because that in my that brain? Because I got asked years Thanks ago to lot, do a baby. thing, right? So there was a thing going around. It was called White Rabbit, Red Rabbit. And it was a play and I was asked to do it and basically the the, the premise was I was going to walk up on stage, they were going to hand me the play and then I'd perform it. Oh, and it was a one person thing. Anyway, it, the whole thing got me too much and I was like, I would, I think I would freeze on there. Yeah. And I had the and words. I would words. have had yeah, the words. Right, right, yeah. So has it ever happened? It doesn't <laughs> happen often, often to people. No, no okay. I want to say because, you know, we rehearse so much yes. <laughs> for a very, very long time, six days a week for so it's like well muscle over memory. It is muscle memory. So yeah. In the movies, when someone yells "line" because they don't know what they're doing, is that real? Does anyone ever it's in the true, musical? That does happen. So people, will but yell, not in the musical. Oh, in in rehearsal, if you you know if you yeah. you just yes. blank, you can say "line" and someone will feed you the line, and then you keep going. But say during the performance, right? You're stuck. You don't know your lines. Then right? someone, what hopefully, happens? another character will pick well, it up. Will and they pick it up? Okay, they'll pick it up, God. and everyone, someone will cover for you. Hopefully, if you've got good people around you. I'd really appreciate <laughs> someone in mid-performance go "line." So, do you have to worry about your understudy? Oh yeah, you keep mean? your eye on well, you know, oh, coming oh, for you because like you got the number one gig. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, no, sweeping the leg no, or something. No. Watch your no. understudy's name. Is- um, and she's beautiful. I've heard she's, she's untrustworthy. She's, and is she a oh, heaven? Worry, and she's incredibly talented. Is she understudying more than one role as well? Uh, or just no, you? No, no, just, just you? Just, yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. a dangerous woman, Ash. She's, she's really yeah. not. She's vengeful. She she's a vengeful woman. <laughs> and the oh, fact dear. that you don't think she is just goes to show how dangerous she's, 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 she's oh tricked you. You're being very naive, Zoe. She's coming for you. Okay, no. Uh, no. Actually, the better the understudy, I feel like the more 
uh, it's more of a relief because you go, oh, the show is in brilliant hands if I were to get sick or something, awful, which I awful, never awful will. mysteriously yeah, down yeah, the stairs. Yeah, never yeah, will. Interesting. I'm going to call her after well, this and say, hey, So nice knowing you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We can't wait to see you in Chicago. Thank You're a true you. talent, perp exactly. zone. We own you. Yeah, when you wake up from the coma after owned. what Ange does, <laughs> we'll be happy to have you back. Oh, God, boy. Actually... And just waiting outside. It's <laughs> a bit awkward. <laughs> 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 just cutting the fuel line on the car. Actually. Oh, one of the pride of the personality <laughs> set, everybody, is Zoe Ventura. Get your tickets in ticketmaster.com.au. Um, it kicks off the 21st of November, so next week. We wish you all the best. Thanks, for, guys. Uh, great and yeah. healthy yeah. season. Thank you. <laughs> and good luck on the starring role, Ange. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Nathan, Matt and Sean podcast. First thing this morning when I was in here, Harry walked in and dumped something mm. right in front mm. of me on the table and it was controversial because we discussed it on our show because I did yes. not think that adults um, uh, <laughs> took part in this situation. And we're talking about the atomic tomato Sandboy chip. I thought that when you're an adult you lean towards lime chips with pepper. And, <laughs> yes, the and, balsamic vinegar and, and, and Harry, you, at the moment you're enjoying a four cheese situation. Yeah, there's yes. a three cheese limited edition yes. from Red Rock yeah. Deli. Like a balsamic and, and beetroot or something, you know what I mean? Like As we get older, like we've still oh. made, we still make clear on to the salt and vinegar and barbecue. Yeah. But, but the things like chicken and, and atomic tomato, I thought that you let that go. When, <laughs> yeah, when no, I used to I used to eat the atomic tomato Did and you? chicken used to be a thing. But yes, I'm with you. I think you get now, a certain age, you go, no. Ellie, you said you're the, in the same park as me because you've never tasted I've them. never tried an atomic I've tomato. I've never tried it either. I've never tried one Do you want to do it now? Really? Shall we do yeah, it now? Do it. Yeah, I've never tried one. Oh, get ready to be blown away, away everyone. Oh, a few. <laughs> All right, so first You'll thing, sniff chip. Let's sniff the chip. They will sniff the chip. It smells. Well, that um, that really stimulates the nasal passage. Mm. It tickles it a bit, doesn't it? Have a oh, sniff. Yeah. Have a sniff. It smells like it smells, chips. No, it, uh, it does smell like chips. Right. <laughs> it smells not dissimilar to a barbecue chip, to be honest. Mmm, oh. that's good. Yeah, Harry, Nathan. Harry. <laughs> Harry. It tastes Harry. like tomato sauce. That is good. No, yeah. no, 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 that doesn't taste like tomato it sauce. No. Oh, come on, Ellie. Go get some tomato sauce. Let me squirt that in your mouth. Oh, that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of got a barbecue vibe. Mm. It feels like it, but just it, with it, a it bit is more tang. It, it is a first cousin to the barbecue mm, chip, mm. but it's a redhead. Sean, yeah, Sean <laughs> is reading the nutritional panel. You know why? Because this stands out to me, Natalie. Gluten not detected. Oh, and the reason why oh. I know that uh, gluten's a big deal is because now we have something in the kitchen, Nathan, that you pointed out earlier on. <laughs> yes, that blew me away. We so have a toaster. We have a toaster. I just <laughs> noticed that it says gluten free only. Mm. So, and I didn't realise that a solitary gluten crumb mm. in a if gluten free person yeah. can be that detrimental. Mm. I don't um, think it would. <laughs> no gluten. Well, gluten why, don't, why don't we put some gluten in there and see what happens to him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nathan, Matt, and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.